Hello everybody, my name is Aubrey and I'm an opera singer and a voice coach. Today we're going to talk about a performance that is absolutely everywhere right now and it is Ingrid Andrus singing the national anthem. She has since come out and said that she was intoxicated that night, which absolutely could factor into the performance. However, I still think there's an opportunity for us to discuss why this song is so hard and famously so. So without any further ado, let's take a peek at the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail by the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. So I can definitely see where there's a lot of commentary. Let's just start off with the fact that the national anthem is famously hard. There's a lot of reasons as to why that is. One of the largest ones is those intervals. It's actually covering quite a large range for a singer. Some people get into it and then they realize about halfway through, oh no, this is a lot harder than I thought. So when we're doing this song, we do have to take that into consideration. Right at the beginning, you can see she's a little bit wobbly, both um, physically and vocally. It seems like she's coming at it with a lack of confidence. And of course, we have to take into consideration if she was intoxicated, that is absolutely going to affect her persona on stage. So I'm not gonna talk too much about that. We're gonna talk more about the vocal aspect of this performance. I can hear what I think is a pitch corrector, which, is very tricky when you're not singing on pitch because the corrector is going to try and drag you to that correct pitch and in that period it's going to sound kind of metallic or computerized. I've seen performances of Justin Bieber getting messed up by one that was actually set incorrectly. When you nod your head yes, but you want to say no, what do you mean? Hey, yo, can we, let's, I know we're live right now, but I think you guys have some tune on my vocals or something. We don't need auto tune. Do we? Which is annoying and frustrating because you might be singing on pitch, but the device is off of the pitch that you want to sing. In the case of this one, I think she actually is the one, unfortunately, off pitch, and the computer is trying to help her. But if she's not noticing that she's off pitch, the computer can't really do very much. So you're going to hear that kind of bumpy, lumpy, computerized sound as the two are struggling for dominance on which pitch is the one that we want to be sounding. I think one of the biggest issues vocally of this performance is how she's kind of like gooing in between each one of those notes. There's not a lot of confidence from one pitch to the next, and that's what I'd rather see. I always kind of look for this with all of my students, is you really want to know where you're starting and where you're going. Because without that, you can start seeing this kind of amorphous melodic shape, making it very hard for the audience to follow along with what you're doing, and also hard for you to pay attention to what pitch you're supposed to be on. If you're not very clear about your accuracy, you could easily end up off pitch and barely even know. And the worst part is it makes it very hard to fix it in the moment if you're not quite sure where you need to be. 
As she goes on, there seems to be a lack of support from natural breath pressure, but more so from actual muscular pressure. It sounds like she's really singing from like her lower chest, despite the fact that we might want to use some other colors in order to access especially those higher notes. For example, when I go about singing pieces that have this large of a range, I have to think about that top note. I need to use that as my guide for the lower stuff that's easier. And what I mean by that is I work on that higher stuff and I think about which shapes work best there and I see if I can try and translate that same shape and that same positioning into my lower range so that I can more easily connect the two. That way I'm not feeling like I've got this low stuff happening and I've got this high stuff happening. I've got it blended from top to bottom versus from bottom to top. So it'll end up kind of sounding something like this. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. You can hear that even though I've got that higher note happening, it feels very similar in terms of color to the lower part. When we get to that climactic moment, we really hear that pressurized system coming in. We don't want to have this kind of pressure as we're going up to the higher range. We want it to be nice and floaty. I always think about Julia Child in order to get that color. And what I want to do is instead of and the rockets wriggling, where it's hard for me to keep good pressure, is to think more about that yawny, Julia Childy kind of shape. And the rockets You get a nice, full, relaxed, even color without that much uh, uh, from below. Another wonderful thing that we can do on this piece as singers to increase the performance quality is to make sure that we're elongating the vowels long enough so that you can really hear all that good texture. One of the easiest things that we can do is just make sure that we sing through all of those nice pure open vowels instead of closing them off too prematurely to a consonant that might not be actually as easy to sing through. For example, just notice the difference just saying the word proudly. 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 If you use that second one, you'll actually have more space to sing. The first one actually ends up clamping off a little bit too early, so you don't get the chance to really show the audience what you're made out of. Always sing through all your vowels, and you will see a huge difference in how fluid and relaxed and full your performance will be. Throughout this whole performance, she's placing it very nasal, and I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with nasal positioning because it can actually be quite useful. And it can also be aesthetically pleasing in a lot of situations. But in this case, I feel like she's not adjusting the nasality as she needs to throughout the range. It sounds like she's always kind of pushing at it from the chest and kind of sitting on top of it instead of allowing that sound to really laser focus forward. As a result, her endings just kind of like trail off or kind of squeeze off instead of being nicely supported and very powerful. And I actually saw a lot of people commenting on this is that it just didn't sound like she was singing. It sounded like she was moaning or something like that. And I can see why, because the quality of that sound kind of just ends up closing and it doesn't end up sounding like it was a purposeful thing. It sounds more akin to an accident or running out of air or something along those lines. And if we're ever in that position where we don't find ourselves feeling confident or maybe we're running out of air, you always want to make sure that you take care of that last part of the voice because that's where a lot of things can show up and we sometimes don't have as much control over that last couple milliseconds of a pitch. That final ornament I think is also very telling because it doesn't sound like she really had a plan. It did sound like she wanted to do something there, but I don't know if she had prepared an idea for the ornamentation as she descended down. This is something that I see all the time in singers, especially people who are just starting out. How do you figure out what you want to do with ornamentation, where you want to do it, and how do you make it sound purposeful rather than an accident? This comes from experience. I tell my students that one of my favorite ways to practice ornamentation is just to find a random karaoke track of some easy song that has very predictable harmony underneath it, and preferably a song that you've probably never heard before so that you're not distracted by the words, and just kind of riff over it. Just feel what it feels like to make choices and feel yourself blending or not blending with the harmonies so they can really hone in on what sounds good to you and what different textures your voice is good at making. And then from there, you can start building your 
vocal fingerprint, so to speak. Never go into a song without having practiced your ornamentation beforehand. It doesn't have to be like really perfect, but I never ever ever want to go into a performance where I know there's ornamentation without knowing what the ornaments are that I'm going to be using. I would tell her to go through the song, kind of figure out what colors she likes, what kind of ornamentation she enjoys doing, and what's something that she can do more than once perfectly. That's another really important trick, is if you can't do that ornament a second time, you might not be able to guarantee that you can do it in the performance setting. So try and do something that you can remember and or possibly write down if you're a person who uses sheet music so that you can ensure the highest quality and the best chance at repetition during the stressful performance that is your final show. When we are on that stage, we cannot guarantee that our anxiety is not gonna kick in and make this performance harder. So always, always, always feel like you have everything really, really solid. Because in case of emergency, you might be able to rely on your muscle memory and your good practice to get you through the rest of that show. Fundamentally, the takeaway from this video really needs to be that the national anthem is hard <laughs> and it needs to be practiced very, very diligently. And you need to make sure that you're in the best headspace possible when going and singing this piece. Not only is this piece full of large intervals, but it also requires a good understanding of how to handle a high stress environment. You will always feel pressured when you're singing the national anthem because it's very famous. Largely everybody has heard it and they know what it's supposed to sound like. And people in the audience are expecting you to sing it with reverence. So all of those things combined makes this piece extremely nerve wracking for a lot of singers. Because if it was an easier song, maybe singers could just focus their energies on handling that stress you get from a high stakes performance. But instead, you also have to be considering the fact that this song is a genuine challenge. I would really like everybody to practice this piece with the focus on intonation on the pitch, as well as good support and great mouth shape. That way we can kind of alleviate some of that anxiety that comes with this song. I hope that everybody listening got something valuable from this. I know that Ingrid is probably feeling really down right now, and I want her to remember that a lot of singers have gone through this exact same kind of performance. It is tricky, and the best thing we can do for her is hope that she feels better and that she knows that she can always have another opportunity to do a great performance. There are really not too many truly career-defining moments for us because everything we ever do is always an opportunity for us to show off our hard work or potentially stumble a little bit. But I do have to say that it has been more than a few of our favorite artists of all time that have experienced very similar situations to this. All in all, every time that we step on stage, we have to do better and better, not just for our audience, but also for ourselves. So thus concludes today's video. I hope you had fun with me and I hope that you learned something about the voice and I hope that Ingrid takes some time to recover and really think about what she wants to do next. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And remember, always keep on singing. I'm sorry.